Hey everybody, welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. This is Cyrus and I'm here today back home here at Santa Monica Beach and it sure is quiet. Seems the virus is really keeping people home. I guess it gets very crowded on weekends but for um, 5 p.m. on a weekday I've never seen it so desolate but very tranquil and uh, very nice. I take for granted when I'm away how much I like this beach because it's so long and especially around this time of day the weather is just perfect so I'm hoping I can get out to the ocean and get some salt water on me. That's kind of my goal today. I made it out of the house seeing if I can just kind of overcome a lot of the fatigue and the symptoms I've been having and just try to get my old life back to normal. What I'm concerned with is if I'm going to feel like crap tomorrow. and. I'm, I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm just really hoping that I can, you know, sp spend a day, a day out at the beach and do stuff and be physically active. And then tomorrow I'm not going to feel like a crash because of my uh, fatigue problems that I'm having from, from the virus. But we'll see. I don't know yet. I'm, I'm staying very optimistic. And with any luck, uh, I'll be fine tomorrow. That's what I'm hoping for. Anyway, on today's video, today's topic, we're talking about how it, it's quite funny, but when I'm doing astral projection experiences, I am often treated by friends and family members whom I encounter on that side as a special needs kid. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, um, to kind of summarize a complex topic, and I'll do a little bit of a, a, a deeper dive after, the, uh, the state that sometimes you're in when you astral project is somewhere in between sleeping and being you know, sleeping dreaming and being conscious on that other realm of existence and it's very similar to when you see somebody here who is for example sleepwalking or they're mumbling in their sleep and they're not making a lot of sense now your skill at astral projection determines how connected to that world you are versus how disconnected you are. Now, I've had experiences where I'd say I'm 90% or more connected to that side. And when that happens, then you can almost guarantee you're going to have a profound experience that's going to really shape your views. Because when you're really, really over there, it's, um, it's, it's, very, it's different from lucid dreaming. It's, diff it's certainly different from normal dreaming. You uh, find yourself in a very tangible and consistent environment with tangible, consistent people that you can meet, gain information from, and um, explore surroundings. Like I, I could be like on a beach on the astral domain and I could feel the sand uh, in my feet just like here. But unfortunately, there is more often these kind of halfway trips where I'm not fully there. When I'm not fully there, then this interesting phenomenon happens where it seems as if I appear on that side, but I don't have all my marbles. By the way, you are watching Afterlife Topics where we talk about um, this kind of crazy stuff. If you like this stuff, uh, go down and hit that subscribe button, share the video, like the video, help tell YouTube that I'm still relevant. If you want to help support this work, I really want to give a shout out to all the amazing patrons out there who are helping keep this going. You can sign up at patreon.com forward slash afterlife topics or you just toss a donation my way at the PayPal and the uh, email address for that's in the description down below. Anyway, so what tends to happen is you may have these kind of halfway experiences. And so you'll be partially connected to that side, and then you'll also be partially um, in a kind of sleep or dream state. And when that happens, you will, as you normally do, appear in that realm. You may be with somebody, you may be with a family member or somebody you want to meet or interact with, but um, you will be coming in and out of a dream consciousness. As a result, you will be babbling and saying a lot of nonsense. And uh, as a result of that, 
you'll generally, well, what happens with me is, for example, I might be with my mother. And I will, when I wake up, I'll remember that I just said a whole bunch of nonsense because I'm coming, I'm, I'm, I'm like, my consciousness is going from, you know, being with her, you know, sitting somewhere with her, talking to her, and having a dream about a bunch of, you know, total nonsense. And so my mind is going between these places and I'm just babbling nonsense. And then it's quite funny because then I wake up and I remember the things I was saying and then how she was replying back to me. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make up some stuff here. Like I'll be sitting with her and then I'll be saying, you know, the, the blue iguana just came back from the chicken factory and is very grateful that he's not one of the chickens. It'll make perfect sense to me because I'll be having some nonsense dream. And then what my mom will say to me in response to that is something to the effect of, that's nice, dear. That's nice. Tell me more about the blue iguana. Yes, dear. Um, so she knows that I am not like, like that the flip side of visiting is that I am not um, fully conscious, that I, I'm, I'm not completely there. And so she's aware of that. And her and anybody else around me, sometimes they make fun of me, sometimes they poke at me, and but most of the time they just kind of treat me like a uh, special needs kid, which, you know, you have to admit, it's pretty funny. And again, I'm only aware of this once I come back, once I'm out of that state. And I, rem I, I realize, hey, I was having a real astral trip hidden in there, but, um, you know, I was having dreams poking holes in it. Now, people who are more even, even more astute astral travelers than I am, They've talked about encountering dreamers from this world on that side. And when you do, again, it's a lot like somebody who is sleepwalking on this side. So you'll see somebody from this world walking around a beach like this one, wherever, whatever astral real estate that exists, or a, maybe a floating castle in the sky, or who knows, it's the astral planes. There's all kinds of weird exotic places that you can appear, which do not or cannot exist on this world. And you'll see somebody show up and, and, uh, They'll just be babbling a bunch of nonsense. And you'll realize that this is somebody from this world who is dreaming and wandering around in a uh, semi-incoherent state of mind. And I, I, I think Jurgen's talked about this, I think Bowman's talked about this. Now, I don't know if I've quite experienced this. Sometimes my experiences are not sustainable long enough to be able to look for specific details like that. But people on that side have talked about this. They have said that they uh, that they encounter people like this, whom again that they call dreamers. So that is what most of us are when we go to sleep at night. Is so sometimes you, you might be you might be thinking you're having a dream, but you're actually going flipping between a dream and a quote real experience on that side. And when that happens. Um, you know, you're technically you're out of your body. You're having a you're having an astral trip, but it's too clouded. It's too it's it, it's been too messed up by uh, the dream the the dream experience. So that you know you 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 have to decode what you experienced after you wake up. You have to put those uh, you have to put those pieces together and think about okay, what was a dream? What was a real experience? You know what really happened and what was in my mind. Now, dreams are still important, but a dream consciousness is a very specific state of consciousness that involves suggestibility and involves your imagination and your higher self, you know, kind of working together, creating stories, creating symbols, creating ideas, and uh, exploring things from a safe vantage point of, uh, you know, semi-consciousness. And dreams are important, but you can't really have a meaningful experience in a dream state. That's why you have to get lucid. You have to have a full, lucid, clear experience to snap out of that. So if I do successfully astral project, let's say for example, I see my mom there. I will tell her, I'm say, I will say, I'm currently experiencing full lucid awareness. I'm, I'm right now astral projecting. Anything you tell me, I'll be able to remember when I wake up. So that they understand a little bit about what's going on. And, uh, 
Uh, it's very beautiful here today. So tell me in the comments if you've ever had this experience, if you've ever seen dreamers on that side, or if anyone has ever treated you like, uh, well, a special needs kid, and basically saying, that's nice, that's nice, dear, when you babble nonsense and embarrass yourself while you're on the other spectrum, the other side, the other dimension. So I've accomplished one of my two goals today. First one was I ate fish tacos at my favorite fish taco place in Santa Monica. Now I'm gonna accomplish the second goal of jumping in the ocean, so. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, you can get involved at the Afterlife Topics Facebook group, afterlifetopics.com. Shoot me an email, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Pick up a book like Understanding Life After Death, The Afterlife and Beyond. All well, that's available over on Amazon. You can find the links at afterlifetopics.com. Uh, I mean, I'm always happy to answer questions from people who buy the books too. Just shoot me a line. Well, within reason, I actually I get like 20 emails a day, so I don't always have the ability to respond to all of you guys. And I apologize if I haven't. All right, this is Cyrus. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Let's take a look at the look at the waves again.